welcome to another episode of Let's Make It. We are back this week, and this is episode number 58, and it's recorded on the 5th of May, Cinco de Mayo of 2014. So this week we're going to do something slightly different because I have recorded some episodes about building an antenna and also how to use the antenna to watch airplanes. And I've actually done it in two separate segments. One of them actually... Um, I show you how to make the antenna, and then the other one I show you some free software you can use to actually watch the airplanes. And there's much more free software out there, and I'll put all the links to different things in the show notes that I don't discuss on today's show. I'm doing it in Linux. It's available on Windows, but um, I'm going to show you in Linux today. But it's two segments. Both of them are a little bit long, so we're going to be close to an hour just with the segments. So because of that... I'm pretty much just going to introduce everything and let the segments run, and then um, we'll come back afterwards and do a little closeout of it. But first, before everything gets started, I first want to thank you for watching and thank you for telling your friends. Uh, the downloads are growing every week the, of our show, and we have some new tracking stuff we're doing, and it's actually pretty amazing how fast it's it's growing. And our Roku app is just going through the roof as far as installs go, which is great. Love to see that. And we're still getting comments. Comments are always great. We get emails and questions, and we love to see that as well. So we're not going to cover any of those emails or questions this week because I pretty much have it all booked up with the segments we're about ready to play. I do also want to thank you for using the Amazon link. More and more people I see are using the Amazon link, and it definitely helps us out. It's not a lot of money, but, you know, if you get... Uh, every couple months, $100, it helps you to buy some of the little things that we use around here. It helps pay for some of the internet costs that we, we use to to uh, run the show. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you go to, to tech-n.tv, you can click on the Amazon links. Anything in there, it's Amazon, or if you want to order anything from Amazon, you can follow the link and add it to your, your favorites bar and use it every time. And just the little things you buy, no matter what it is, uh, helps us out as well. And it's it's growing. That's growing as well. Uh, and it's, it's helpful to have a little bit extra money coming in every once in a while for some extra parts or things to uh, use here on the show. So all that being said, I want to go ahead and uh, talk a little bit before I start playing this video. The video, sorry about the sound quality, it basically was a camera over my head at the workbench um, and I was working on the antenna. So it's kind of ambient sounding. I did speed up a lot of it because if I left it all in there, we'd be here for two hours. And I know that isn't... Uh, isn't delightful for anybody to sit here and watch somebody make something for two hours. So I sped up some of those segments in there as well. However, uh, it, is, it was easy for me to create the segment, easier to create the segment that way than doing it here because um, I did run into some problems and I'll talk about them through through there and I'll, I'll remind you of some things uh, at the end of the segments as well. But for right now, let's go ahead and jump into our first segment. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to make our very own ADSB antenna. So, I'm not going to go to ADSB. Hopefully, either I've added this to the segment before or we talked about this already. But what we're going to make is a very simple uh, half wave antenna of ADSB. ADSB is a uh, 1090 megahertz, 1, 1.09 uh, gigahertz. So, what I'm using is RG6 cable and I've already pre-cut the cables, although they're not exactly the length, but you can probably see this little pal here. Um, these are all going to be part of the antenna right here. And uh, it's really easy to make, actually. And we're going to walk through that. Like I said, I've already pre-cut these, so it's going to go a little, a little quicker. What I had to do is figure out the length of the wavelength for 1090, which is 275.22 about millimeters, so 275 millimeters. Half of that and then this cable has a 79% factor, drop factor, whatever it's called. Um, so this cable has a 79% velocity factor. And basically what velocity factor, or VF, sometimes you see it written, is how much this material slows down the communication or the electric, electrical signals. So this wavelength that I've calculated in this, uh, in the 275 divided by two, is actually what it is in where there's no space. Like if you're out in space, and there's no water or anything to, for it to go through, that is the velocity that it will travel at. But this material is not air. It's slow, and it slows down the movement of uh, molecules. So there's a velocity factor, and you can see this about most cables. You can probably find it on the internet for the cable you have. 
I'll look at this particular cable that I bought, and it's 79% of velocity factor. So basically, you take your half wavelength times 0.79 to get how long it is, and it ends up being, in our case, 108 millimeters. So this caliper is set to 108 millimeters right now. So I basically need to strip from here out and from here out. I'll try to center it the best that I can, but I'm just going to take a handy dandy knife here and I'm going to strip it just like so. I'm going to do this one first. And we need to do this for all of our segments of this cable. And this knife is not very good, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. Let me see if my other knife works a little bit better. I wasn't sure which one was the sharper of the ones. This one looks pretty well used as well. I'll go back up here a little farther. We actually want to strip the whole way down to the wire, so it doesn't really matter if you go the whole way to the center, as long as you don't cut through the center. That does work much better. So we have, there's one end. And let's go ahead and do the other end. So you want to be this length part. And I'm going to go right down the line here. And just like this. And I didn't quite go far enough. I didn't get the whole way through this. Yeah, I did. Just to pull it out. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. We want to make sure this doesn't get involved in any way in this metal piece in the middle. So we got to make sure we clean this completely up. Just like this. So there you see we have a piece cut to the right length. Don't worry if, these, if the end pieces are a little bit longer because they're going to be actually be helpful when we put together the next piece. So we're going to do another one. And after I do this one, I'm going to speed the process up a little bit. And we'll come back after I get everything stripped. And we'll actually I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to strip all these very quickly. It will seem real quickly to you, won't to me. And we'll come back and talk about what we do in the next step. I'll go ahead and strip all these off first.
Okay, so I've now gone through and cut up all of the pieces. And you see there's 12 of them here. Actually, there's 13 total, but I'll explain the 13th one in a second. So this is a 12 segment antenna. And there's one here that I only did one end, and that's because this is really number 13, and this is going to be the start. On this end, I'm going to put a connector, an F connector, that will connect it to my antenna, or to my radio, and that's how I'll connect this up. So, so the next step is uh, tying this all together. So first thing you got to do is you need to separate them so they don't touch each other, where you don't want them to. So I've already pre-cut a bunch of small pieces of electrical tape, and I'm just going to take, and I'm going to poke this down through this one kind of like so so that's one there I'm going to grab another one and I'm going to poke it down through and here's kind of the trick is I'm going to get this in here first and I'll show you Alright, now that I have it like this, you basically want the insides to go to the outsides on both sides. So I'm going to take and I'm going to push this into this outside shell on both of them. Just like that. Let me get this tape a little bit more balanced. Again, the tapes mainly so they don't touch each other. So if I'm going into the outsides of each, what I'm going to do is push together. And you're going to see right here on the sides where it kind of goes up to the side. That's a good thing. Electrical tape's kind of getting messed up, but we should be good now because I'm not going to be able to touch. Just like that. And then there is one of them put together. Now I'm going to take an electrical tape, which I have sitting right here, and we're going to wrap it up so it doesn't come apart. If I find it again, there it is. New electrical tape, so it's a little harder to get started. There it goes. Alright, so we'll start up here, and we are basically going to wrap around this intersection like this. And that's just to hold it together so it doesn't come apart. So this is our start, so this is an really a segment, we'll put the F connector on down here, uh, ultimately. And I'm going to go ahead and get this completed, and we'll go to the next one. So for the next one, we get electrical tape, and we poke it through, just like so. And then we take another one, and we poke it through the same way. I'm get this one to poke through. Oh, I'm just hold the right thing. There it goes. All right. And then we're going to put this on the outside of this one. Kind of like that. Actually, this one seems to go through too. Just got to do them both at the same time. It's kind of somewhat helpful to either have, depends how you look at it, I guess, have them the same length or different lengths. The outside, that's on the outside, and we push them together just like that, and there we go. We have another one together. So you can see it looks like it's offset a little bit, and it's because it is because we're poking into the side. That's just one of the, th the things about these types of antennas. We're going to go ahead and we're going to tape up this one. How long to make the, these ends is really up to you. I have some of them here that are going to be a little bit shorter. But to me, I think the longer they are, the better it stays together. As long as it doesn't poke to the outside shielding or poke it to the inside in any way. And typically, I don't see it, have a problem with that if you don't, if you go slow and kind of keep an eye on it. But just like that. All right, so now we have two segments in. And we're going to go do the next one. And 
I'll go ahead and speed this process up since you kind of get the gist of what's going on here. And to the magic of editing, we'll have it done in uh, a minute or so. All right, so I just did a test to see how it was going so far, and it didn't go well. So what you're going to see me do is undo one of these and go come back until I figure it out. It's actually probably a good idea that you test as you as you do it, and I wasn't. And because of that, I have to undo it to go back and figure out where I made my mistake because I am getting signal across the outside and the inside, which is. Uh, not good so I'm going to undo this so you sh you're seeing me undo something because I didn't check it along the way basically is what it ends up being and electrical tape was really sticky so all right let's take this out I'm going to go backward one at a time until I find the one that's the culprit should not be able to get anything across the center and the outside. They should be completely separate from each other. Alright, so it's prior to this one. The problem exists. So here, I've undone two of them. I didn't, if I would have tested on the way, I wouldn't have had to. So we'll keep going backwards. And with my luck, it probably ended up being the very first one that I did. So this is a good reason to test along the way. All right. Thank you for the electrical tape here. Probably good to make sure I don't have it at the end down here too. All right, so let's try this one. This is the first one that I did, and we're good there. No, we're not. So it's, it goes the whole way back to the very first one. Let's go ahead and undo this one. Part of the thing about this antenna is, the, and the reason you're going inside and out is, it's a half a wavelength. So you want an antenna that's basically you loaded every half of a wavelength, wavelength. And so whenever the inside conductor is the one that's going to the antenna, it basically can't get out because it's shielded. And the ones where it goes across the shield is where the actual antenna part is actually doing its work. So, all right, let's see how I messed this one up. And we'll just make sure that the wires themselves are okay. I did not check that, but I would have no reason to, to think that was an issue. Yeah, that wire's fine. All right. And that wire's fine. So the wires themselves are fine. It was just somehow I crossed over... I just don't know how I did it. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to start over again, basically, with our first segment. So I'll speed this up again through this process, and you'll see me testing through it.
All right, so I just put the last piece in. And I want to go over a couple of things. First of all, I just sort of just tested it end to end. Uh, I have no shorts the whole way to the end, and the center goes the whole way through about putting the center to center. So the, this is good. Um, now, a couple things through this process that I had learned, I learned the hard way, obviously, is these end pieces you see a lot on my here is I don't, you want it too long because if it's too long, it kind of pokes through the outside edge. Uh, and it's very hard to get to get in. So I started cutting the ends off towards the end, and that made it a lot easier. I would say you probably want it to be a centimeter to centimeter and a half at the most uh, of clear copper. So if you would cut these at um, basically 13 mil, or, yeah, I'm sorry, 13 centimeters, and then clean off a centimeter on each end, you would be right there at uh, where you need to be. Because you want to be right about 11 centimeters, or it's, 100, it's 108 millimeters, which is close enough to 11 centimeters. Uh, that will be fine. Um, so 11 plus 1 on each end is 13. So you could cut these little black things at, at 13 and trim off a centimeter on each end, and I think that would be the best uh, best thing to do. Um, I had to clean up a few of them in the process, but um, it wasn't that bad. I, I poked through once or twice on the ends, and I had to redo uh, two of them in the process. Uh, when you cut through the wires, make sure there's no, no little pieces of uh, the outside shielding stuck anywhere. That's what I was happening. It was, it was coming in and hitting the uh, inside pin, inside wire. So the next step is to make this protected. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to pause for a second and go grab a 5-foot PVC pipe, and we're going to put this in. Now the other thing you're going to notice is that uh, I actually did this one end up here, which I didn't need to do. I brought it off because this is the last last one. Um, so I'm going to make sure that it's not shorted, and then I'm going to put a piece of electrical tape over the end of it just to make sure nothing gets in here and touches this. So let's clean this off. I actually have a piece right here. And I'm going to put on the end just like so. Just like that. All right, so, and then we're going to tape this end with a big thing of uh, electrical tape to help hold it in the, in the PVC pipe. So let me go grab the PVC pipe, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now the antenna's done, I went out and I uh, cut a piece of 5-foot PVC pipe to the right length. But before I go put it in here, I'm going to put this compression fitting on. So I'm putting on an F-connector. Uh, it could be any kind of, it could use BNC or whatever. I decided to use F-cut. I had one handy right here. Oops. What you're seeing is the pipe I just cut falling over. Let me get it out of the way here temporarily. So I'll put this on. And I think that's all I'm going to get out of it. So let's go ahead and clean the end up a little bit. Okay. This is a compression fitting. Hopefully, I got the right tool for this fitting. We will find out in a moment. It looks like it's close at least. Compress it just like so. That was the right size tool, obviously. And there I have a nice F connector. And it's on there nice and tight. Alright, so before we put this into the tube, actually, I'm going to go ahead and stick it somewhat into the tube and slide it into the tube alright so if we go into the tube what we want to do is take, if I can find my tape that I had here earlier. It's probably right in front of my face and I just don't see it. What I'm looking for is my electrical tape. And I don't see it. Oh, go down. Let's see. Alright. So we're going to put a little knot thingy here on the end. So it helps hold this up from my starting point. Right there it is. Alright. We'll just 
going to come up here to the end in this area. And it's going to keep building this knob up. There's probably a proper name for what I'm getting ready to do, but I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to keep wrapping electrical tape. to go again. So this is a half inch PVC and any bigger would really be overkill and would make you do this a lot more than I'm getting ready to do it. So, But it would work fine. Right. Still have ways to go. Past the mugs that are up there, so you're hearing clanking together as the uh, Texan TV mugs. Okay. Is that big enough yet? Right, I think I got it big enough. Actually, I may have actually gone a little too far. So let me get this ripped off of here. And we're going to push this into here, and we're going to use this electrical tape which I have too much of now, to help hold it up here. Let me get rid of a couple of wraps. I think we'll be all good. That's probably right there. I'll just cut that off. You want it to be snug. You just got to make sure it goes into the hole, and that last one would not go into the hole. All right, so this is still very tight. Yep, still a little too tight. So let me grab off a couple more of these. And the main reason you're doing this is so this thing is not flopping around inside of there. Let's see how that works. Uh, almost. So you can see I wrapped it around just a bit too much. That one will work. All right, so it's, it's going to require some pushing, but that's okay. That's what we kind of want. Okay, so almost completely down there. Going over the edge a little bit right there. Let's get that fixed. You really want it this tight because you're going to have. This is what's going to hold the wire up in the air instead of pushing out the bottom. Actually, I may even put a little one in the bottom some, somehow if I can. So that's why I'm cleaning this up and getting this to go because it's the right size. It just has a where I ripped it off and cut it. It's a little, there we go. So you see it's going in, just like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to take electrical tape and we're just going to put a small piece of it. Let me clean it up so it's smooth. Because at this point I'm not going to cement this shut. I'm just going to put a small piece of electrical tape around it. Just like that. go get the uh, end cap and we'll put the end cap on this one and we'll go to the other end. Let's see here. Right here. Alright, so we have an end cap just like this. We're going to uh, slide this on. 
and it's gonna be a little tight, but that's the idea. That's on. We trim off the extra electrical tape that's right here. See, some of it got bunched up, but that's okay. There's enough in there to hold it from turning off. So that looks good. Just like that. So there's our end cap. So we have the other end left, where I put the F connector. And you know, I probably should have put the F connector on after I put the end on. Um, but we need to put this other end cap on. Before we do that, we need to drill a hole. So I'm going to go drill a hole in the end cap, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I went outside to the shed and uh, drilled a hole in the end. I had to make it big enough, though, to fit through the F connector. So going forward, it would be better if you didn't have to make a big hole and Maybe put the F connector on either after you put this end cap on, or the other option you have is to get an F connector that goes through the end cap, put it on there, and make this long enough just to screw into the bottom of this. In my case, it's going to go on like this. Now, before I do this, kind of like we did up top with the uh, little bundle up top, I'm going to add a little bundle in here and see about where I want to put it because I want this cap to what's holding it so like right there's where I want the edge to be that just help hold it a little bit up in there help protect it from gravity pulling it out pulling it apart so I'm gonna put it let's see, right about here and I'm just going to wrap it like I did the other one. Although not quite as big, because obviously I want this one to go in a little bit better. Or not, not to go in, but uh, that's why actually I don't want it to go in. So I mean, I can make it a little bigger. I mainly don't want it to go through the hole that I just drilled, the F connection. Comes Bella the Poochie Dog. Alright, so I'm almost done with this. Hi, Bella. That should be plenty, I think. And let's go ahead and cut this nice and clean. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to put a small piece of electrical tape. Well, first before I do that, let's make sure this fits the way I think it's going to fit. Yep, that's tight. Good. It's exactly what I want. I want to make sure that the antenna is not going to pull apart on me. All right, I'm just leave that there. Just another small piece of this. Just make this a little snug of a fit. And we're going to push this in. Underneath, I could have the other one like that, and then we're just gonna push it on, and we're gonna do a little bit of trimming right around the edge here. I didn't get as much as I wanted to do it again. Let me I got it here. I almost got it. Okay, so there we have a 1090 and 1090, to be, just to be safe, because I'm going to be making a couple of different ones of these. I'm going to write on here, 1090. 
megahertz. And this is 4 ADSB. So now I know. All right, so that's it for the build. Now we're going to go over to the computer and see how much of a difference this makes versus what I used before. Okay, so that was me building the antenna. And you notice a couple of things there that I want to make sure that I really highlight because, uh, first of all, test. And don't wait till you get started to test. I actually f forgot to test. And when I finally remember it and I did, did that first test and it failed, I had to undo the whole thing and go back because I wasn't doing it along the way. Um, that's, that's a very important thing. I wasted a lot of time with that, and that's why that's in the segment. I could have cut it out, but it's very important that you understand that you need to test through the, through the entire process. Uh, the other thing is I put the F connector on before I had put the end, or had drilled a hole in and put the wire through. It worked fine the way that I did it, but you could make it a little bit tighter probably if you would just drill a hole big enough for the wire instead of the, the wire and uh, the end of the cable. That's just a, a personal preference thing. Um, you also will notice I did not I did not glue the pipe, so it's not waterproof. If you're going to put it outside, you might want to go get some glue uh, for the PVC. I figured I'd just use electrical tape and make it tight. I'm playing with it inside for the most part. If I do decide to put it outside, I will uh, take that apart and glue them shut so that it's, it is waterproof. And I'll also put some silicone on the bottom wire just to keep the inside uh, from getting wet from any kind of the elements. The uh, one thing I didn't show in that video was the, actually the final process. And, you know, I don't even have it with me here. It's up in the other room. Um, it, uh, it uses the little U, the little stick. I'm going to go with the stick. will show you, and I'll put links in the show notes too. But I'm going to show you the stick at uh, another time because we're going to use it for other things. The, uh, the software-defined radio stuff is really neat. You can pretty much do anything you want. Just a little bit ago, I was listening to an FM station through the little $19 dongle through my computer. Uh, using uh, SDR Sharp, which uh, I kind of showed you. Well, you can see in the next video. Um, and it's really neat. You can listen to uh, ham radio stations or FM stations. You can get data off of uh, paging systems, whatever. It's really cool, and we're going to start experimenting with that a little bit more uh, through the coming weeks, maybe even build some different kinds of antennas for different, different systems. So before we go too far, I want to go ahead and take a quick break and thank some of our sponsors, get them some airtime, and we'll be back right after this. You work hard for your business. Your website should, too. No matter what industry you're in, select your customizable high-quality design with professionally written content and graphic elements created for your business. Make changes online whenever you like. Switch your background color, page layout, and text anytime. Add your pictures and logo. Upgrade your website with useful one-in-one -one web apps. And integrate social media. Upload your photo albums and embed videos. With one click, optimize your website for viewing on mobile devices. Choose your free domain or you can easily transfer an existing one. Thanks to One in One's SEO tools, customers can find you everywhere. One in One My Website, a professional website created by you. When you open up an Audible audiobook, it opens up your imagination. Enjoy a steamy romance while ironing the sheets. Discover an historic battle while battling the bulge at the gym. Visit audible.com slash free books now to try two books absolutely free. Get caught up in a whodunit during a do-it-yourself project. Listen anytime, anywhere with the Audible mobile app. When you're out for a walk, learn how to climb the corporate ladder. Or bring a little magic to your minivan with a fantasy novel. With over 100,000 titles, Audible is an amazing experience that you can now try absolutely free. And just like our books, there's no binding. Our great listen guarantee lets you exchange a title you don't like for another. No questions asked. Visit audible.com slash free books to download two books of your choice right now.
special thanks to all of our sponsors for uh, sponsoring us. Also, want to talk a little bit about some of the other shows on the network. Uh, we are some of the other shows are started back up now. Uh, the Mac Minutes are out every week. Uh, Security One Hundred Ones are out every other week. Uh, this show comes out every week. We have a new show coming up, and uh, some new segments coming for our programming show. So we're starting to spin things back up, kind of for the summer. Uh, now that the holidays are over and things are starting to slow down on my side a little bit, I can do a little bit of catch up and get things back up and running again. All right, so it's time for the next segment. And in this segment, you're going to see me take the antenna and compare it to the, the one that comes with the SDR dongle. So with the $19, $19.95, you get this USB stick and you get this tiny little antenna. And you're going to see me sitting in my office, which is actually in the basement of the house, and playing with it and comparing in them. So um, and we come back from this segment, I also took it somewhere else in the house and I'll explain some of our results. So this one's not as long as the first segment, so it goes a little bit quicker. So let's get to that right now. Okay, so what I have right here is I am running, this is Kali Linux, which is what I pretty much use for Linux. Um, I'm running this on a VM inside my Mac, and I have connected the antenna that was just made. So what I'm running here is a program called Dump1090, and you, you're seeing right here is like American Airlines Flight 2270 is at 10,925 feet, going at 281 miles an hour, and this is the XY coordinate, tracking at 25 degrees, and it has received 38 messages. Now, I do live uh, west of both Dulles International, Baltimore, Washington International, and Reagan National. So these flights could be all coming in and out of. I'm probably mm, 40 miles west of most of them. Uh, maybe just a little bit, 40 to 50 miles west. But we get a lot of planes flying over. And you can see how many I'm seeing. This is off the homemade 12-segment uh, 1090 uh, antenna that I just uh, just made, and you can see not not every plane gives you details about where it's going and or where it's at. Most of them give you altitude information, uh, and you can see some of them are changing rather quickly. So uh, here's one that's climbing out. The American Airlines is actually descending, so it's, I don't know where its destination actually is. Um, here's a UPS plane. It's 38,000 feet, so it's probably not landing anywhere. It's probably flying overhead. Uh, its direction actually is 238, so it's heading towards like Chicago from me. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, it's heading towards to Kentucky, then towards Kentucky, West Virginia area. Uh, so it's hard to say where it's going. But you can see things dropping off and on. This is with the antenna that I built. What I want to do next is show you what it looks like with the antenna that comes with this. It'll give you a great example of how much better this antenna works. So I'm going to pause this video and I'll be back in just a few seconds. Okay, so this is after I removed the antenna that I built and plugged in the one that came with the $19 uh, software-defined radio device. You can see things are starting to drop off. I see a lot of things have dropped off already, but you see a bunch of them here that are coming up that are still getting ready to drop off. So you can see the the list of planes that are visible has shrunk considerably now. One thing you have to remember also, I'm doing this in my basement. So I'm, I do have a window kind of behind me facing it towards the backyard because it's like a walkout basement. But I am, for the most part, very much underground. So um, this would be much better if I was out on my deck or something like that. In fact, I may go out and try to see how many I can get on my deck just for curiosity reasons. Uh, but you can see that the number of planes that are visible. The UPS one is the only one so far that I know where it's at uh, in this direction that it's heading. And actually, I haven't seen... I know I keep getting updates about it. I see it's the one that was last seen. But it hasn't changed its location in... Well, maybe it's not... Maybe it had, no, it, it, it just got updated again. It didn't change. So I don't know what's going on with that one. Oh, there it did change. All right, so it is, it is changing its location as well. So it's still within range. Um, I don't know exactly what this right here is now one of the cool things about this particular program and you know it's running on Linux uh, is it has a built-in web server as well so I'm going to real quickly pause and bring up web browser and show you what it's doing uh, that you can see hang on one second okay so what I'm doing now is you see I have two planes that I know where they are located and the directions that they're gone over here and you see my screen's a lot bigger now, so you see a lot more information. But you come over here, and let me get this one out of the way. Hang on. And 
bring this up. So you see here, this is coming from the dump 1090. Basically, I'm going to my local VM server, and now you see I have three planes, and over here I have three planes. So I have three planes, I know where they are, and I can come over here and I can click on a plane, and it tells you its altitude, its, its speed was unknown, and where it was located. So let's see, let's click another plane. This is United Airlines Flight 1648, 10,000 feet and climbing at 331 knots, and here's where it's located. So you can see you can click on details. So I can zoom in and see where these planes are located. So I'm located um, I'm way up here. Let's see. I am right in this area right here. So you see these three planes. And this is off the tiny little antenna that comes with the ADSB. Uh, dongle for 19 bucks. So I'm gonna go back now and put in the big antenna and see how far we can see. So let's see if I can do this while I'm recording. So I have the other one out and the new one in. So let's see if we get any more planes. Well, you can see on the right hand side over here, we're getting more planes. See, more planes showed up. So we're getting a lot more distance information actually one plane went away but we got a new plane right here oh we got a fourth plane now somewhere right here so we did came back so must have, we may have lost its contact when I was changing out the cable so you can see I'm picking up a plane that's probably see Chambersburg for me and I'm right here it is probably 40 miles and then we're, they're coming up, they're probably heading to Harrisburg. Let's see what they are. No, nope, not heading to Harrisburg. They'll be a lot lower than that if they're heading to Harrisburg. So these are just passing over at this point. So you see I have four planes currently that I see. Actually, I see more than four. You go over here, you can see I have more than four. But only four of them are reporting their actual location. Um, the other ones are reporting altitude information, sometimes altitude and speed and direction, but not their actual uh, location on the map. So. I only have four of these. Again, this is from my basement. So if I went out to my deck, I would probably get quite a few more of these uh, instead of being in the basement. But this is still a great example of how far you can pick up something with a great antenna uh, that's made very cheaply, as I as I made this earlier. So uh, we're still at four planes on the map. You can see four planes over here that have X and Y coordinates. Um, so yeah, that's it. This is. Um, the best way to show you how you can track planes with an ADSB antenna. All of this is totally free. I'm running on free Linux. This is a free download. Uh, the Dump 1090, Dump 1090 is a free download. Um, there's lots of things you can do with the software-defined radio, which I think I'm going to dig into more. Some of this. Let me go ahead and I want to jump out of this. So my web browser is going to go away. But what I want to do is um, actually go into this program. Let me uh, see, where is it? I can't remember the mono. I can't remember the word mono. Okay, so this is actually you can download SDR Sharp for your PC. It's free, it's free as well. I'm just, I have it on Linux. It runs on Linux and on Windows both. So this is, let's see, oh, we're going to hit play. This is what this SDR dongle is receiving. So right now you see I'm at 1090 right now, which is where this little bar is right here. And we should see data coming in here. Let me uh, bring this down a little bit. I can't really you see a little bit of data in there. May I need to bring it up actually? The other direction for contrast. Yeah, it's hard to see the data actually in here. Let me just do a little bit of a zooming in. So there you see uh, some noise, which is basically around the frequency. The dongle tends to have a little bit of noise right around the frequency that it's listening listening on. And you see all this is uh, I'm bringing the contrast down now. So Let's see if we can actually get it, get to see some data in the list. I'm mean, gonna actually go over here. And I'm actually going to change the uh, frequency slightly. Let me move uh, 1090. 
Oops, I want it completely away. So 1090 is ready to go. Not too far. Go one more. Uh, I'm not getting exactly what I'm trying to do here. So I'm trying to get 1090 so it's offset slightly, which is 1090. So it's somewhere around here. Hopefully we can see some data maybe when we do a little bit of zooming back out though. So it's very hard to see in the waterfall graph, really, because all this noise is right around it. But there is data in there that uh, you're getting. And the SDR number can, can go to anything. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. One of our local ham repeaters is uh, 146640. Let me go to wide FM. And it's 146. Six four zero. So again, we're going to see noise right around this frequency, but um, you can actually listen to ham radio in here as well because I'll ask your speakers using this little dongle. So it's a very it's a very cool little device, especially for nineteen bucks if you're in uh, getting things off the air. I'm actually working on something now where you can, if you're close to the water, you can figure out where ships are located. Um, now this whole SDR thing that I was just doing with uh, the airplanes. Let me go ahead, let me get out of this and go back and I'll restart that. But um, the th whole thing with the airplanes can be reported to flight radar and if you do that, like using, you can do it with a let me get it up here Oops, flight there's a dash in there you can use a Raspberry Pi and report this data in, and if you do that, you actually get a free account with Flight Radar. All right, hang on. Oh, it's Flight Radar 24. Okay. So this is basically where you're going to report data, and if you decide to report data up, you can get a free account. Now, um, let's see. I actually don't see any planes on the radar map. Oh, there they are. It just took a while to. Uh, so you can see like this stuff. I'm not, I'm not reporting up, so this isn't anything that I'm sending them. But um, I could, you know, set up, a, and I might actually have a Raspberry Pi here to experiment with this. Is set up a Raspberry Pi with this antenna that I just built, and we can send up data to Flight Radar, and that would give me a premium account or whatever, whatever you get with the, uh, the premium accounts. I'm not sure what it actually gives you, but here you can see uh, the planes are. You know, actually moving along, and if I come back over here and I start up um, the 1090 app, which is this, let's see what kind of flight data we get from this. It's coming in. No, so far, nothing is actually on there that's uh, location based. We'll let it populate for a little bit. I would think I would get a few of these uh, right here because these are actually not far from me because I'm located right here, right outside of Brunswick, close to the river. And so far I haven't seen any of these, which I would thought I would have seen by now. All right, so I'm not actually getting any uh, actual plane location data at this time. For for whatever reason, which I I do not know. Now there are different. These could be actually small private planes. Let's look real quick. That's Southwest Airlines. It's not small. It's not private. Going from Cleveland to Baltimore. So I'm not quite sure why I'm not seeing that. I would have thought I would have seen would have seen that one. Let's see what's this one. That's uh, coming from a local airport, Syracuse to uh, Washington. Uh, this is a small Piper Navajo, so it's uh, it's going to Lancaster though, 
it's left Washington is heading to, to uh, from IAD in Dulles and is heading to to, to um, Lancaster so I don't know why I'm not necessarily seeing these they are obviously reporting out data they there are two different systems with a DSB and it could be that they're on the other frequency uh, I'm not sure so but anyways you can get a free thing with flight radar if you want and just as a, an interesting side that I've learned through this is this FDY 2310 which is like the the tail ID if you come out to here and you go to Google and you paste that in just like that you can get your the flight information and if you know the tail ID of an aircraft so I don't have any uh, tail IDs here but if you had one you could actually take and paste the tail ID in or oh, there's one okay this is actually a flight so this one we get some information about as well this oops I didn't mean to cancel I meant to copy let me get it back up here again there's another one so I got another plane uh, let's see it's See if I can paste that in. No, let's just type it in. JBU seven eleven. JBU seven eleven. So that one's going from JFK to Los Angeles. Um, but I don't see any tail tail date details. So, but here you can see other flights. So now I should have well, I have two flights that have location on them. So if I come over here to mine, and this will refresh my my page. I got to zoom in. Okay, I got three now. So there you see I have these three. Uh, the, that's the JBU 711. So you can see I see these. And, you, and these are actually farther away than where the other ones were on the Flight Radar 24 uh, site that I wasn't seeing. So that's why I need to investigate that a little bit more as well. But if you know if you know tail information on a particular flight or airplane, you can look it up, and it'll actually uh, show you a picture of it up here uh, in Google. So you just gotta know the the tail information. I don't know if this see it's pull UAL. Seventeen forty one. So that's going from, that just left Dulles, Washington, to going to San Francisco. So that one's probably flying up over me pretty soon here. UAL, 17,300 feet. Um, Destin heading basically west, due west at this point. And you see it's climbing. It was at 13, now it's 18,000. 18, 18, 18, 8, 18, 5. So it's climbing good. So you can see I'm getting all this data totally free off of the air. What I don't see is um, the tail information. I don't remember where I found that before, but I did find tail information before about the aircraft. And you get, you get all kinds of cool things about the aircraft. You look it up and it shows you pictures of it and all that kind of stuff as well. But I'm not getting that at, at the moment. But anyways, that is our um, software defined radio. And we'll do more software defined radio because this is really fun to play with. Like I said, I'm playing with one for the tracking ships, although I don't live close enough to water to pick anything up. Um, but it's a, it's a lot lower frequency and you know, travels around the Earth a little bit farther. Uh, but it's pretty neat. You can track ships and things and see where they are if you want as well. And you can do that on a website as well. You can report it to that website, just like you can do with Flight Radar 24. So if you're interested, if you live close to water and you'd like to play with that, they're always looking for people to help give them information where ships are. So that's something you can play with. And here you can see i got five I got five airplanes now, right now on my map. Two of them are on top of each other. JBU 711 and GEC. So 33,000 and 32,000. So you think they'd be a little close, don't you think? They're basically a thousand feet apart from each other. That seems a little close to me. I don't know, heading in the opposite direction. I don't think I would be comfortable flying a thousand feet apart from each other. But, anyways. It's a busy area, so you can see I got uh, I got six planes now in the area. But okay, that's it. We'll stop this and end this segment. 
All right. So in that segment, you saw me basically using one piece of software that's on Linux. It's very cool, very lightweight. Um, you just download it and install it, and it runs like right away. And it actually runs its own web browser. So when you were seeing me look at that, that's actually Google Maps coming off of the uh, the 1090 application so very simple to use uh by default if you just run it it runs and uh doesn't run in an interactive mode if you want to see that list of things like the airplanes that are up there you have to do uh, dash dash interactive and i'll put some of this stuff in the show notes too and a link to the actual software that you can download if you're on a linux system and it works very very nicely uh very easily now there's a couple other things you can do and i put links to other ones and i may do another segment at some point uh much shorter obviously about tracking some airplanes using Windows-based software because that's that's available as well. It takes two tools on Windows. It takes the SDR Sharp, which I kind of showed you, and you saw the waterfall and the data coming down and stuff. Um, it takes that program and another program to map out the airplanes. But it's the concept is, is the same. It shows you a map where the airplanes are going. Now, um, you saw in that segment... That even with a small antenna, I was getting an airplane that was probably flying pretty close to me, heading in towards one of the airports. And I saw I got more, obviously, when I put the the big antenna on. And you saw things probably within 50 miles of me. When I went upstairs, so inside the house, but I went up upstairs where I have less, I'm less underground, I was getting planes as far south as North Carolina and as far north as Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And I'm actually in Western Maryland. So uh, my range definitely increased. Now, I still didn't have much to the east. That's some good stuff to the west, too, but not as far. Uh, because I have mountains to my west, so I have uh, a blockage there. And to my north, oh, even though I'm at the, pretty much the top of a hill, there's still one house that's a little bit higher than me and some trees going up a hill to my east. So my coverage to the east, I think when the planes get below a certain level coming into airports, I lose that visibility. If they're high, I still keep them. So I have to get my antenna even higher to get over that little hill. And to the west, uh, unless they're high, or I probably won't get very far because I do have a fairly sizable mountain uh, to my west. I'm in the foothills of that mountain, so I'm not like in the valley of it. But I am. it is still a visible blocking thing. And basically with 1090 being such a high frequency, they have to be pretty much line of sight. Um, being able to see you without obstructions. I mean, I know you can't see that far away but it has to be high enough where there's no obstruction between you and the airplane. So I got some great results when I was upstairs. I mean, I had pages of airplanes uh, when I was upstairs just sitting in my living room. So I still like to get it out higher and, and off of my deck you know, and get some results out of it. And I actually am looking at using a Raspberry Pi to do this as well. Um, the software that reports to the Flight Radar 24 uh, it runs, there's a Linux version of it. So, and if somebody's compiled it to run on a Raspberry Pi, and I'm really seriously thinking about taking the antenna and uh, pretty much making an outside box for the Raspberry Pi because you can keep it close to the antenna and uh, sending that data up to the Flight Radar 24. So, that's something looking forward in the future. All right, so this was a little bit of a long show, uh, and we have no Bob tonight because it was a segment that was playing. There was no real reason to really. Waste his time, I guess, to come in here. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have questions, things like that for other shows, ideas for other shows in the future, please let us know. Uh, just a reminder, you can get us on uh, iTunes. You can get us on YouTube, uh, Stitcher Radio. We're on Stitcher, uh, although the radio doesn't make much sense for the show, but some people do listen to it on Stitcher. And I, and I don't quite uh, understand how that works, but... Uh, they do. And you can get us on any of, the, any of the other podcasting directories. And if we're not in a podcasting directory that you like to use, you need to let us know. We'll make sure that we get ourselves there. Thank you for telling your friends. It's helping us grow this. And every week I'm going to say thank you because it's because of you that we are growing like we are. And uh, we much, much appreciate that. Keep the ideas coming. And keep the questions coming via email. Have a great for show notes for this show, contacts, and more, go to the TexN.tv website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the TexN.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show. You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. 
Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, TiVo, and Roku. You can even find us on your Zoom.